Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. This is an extremely good, valuable book. And it's put out by Baylor University Press. Um, Larry Hurtado, Journal of Biblical Literature, writes some stuff on here. And it's by David P. Capes, an Associate Dean of Biblical and Theological Studies, Professor of New Testament. Um, Old Testament Yahweh text in Paul's Christology. Now, I've been reading some capes, not just this book. Man, he brings out some fantastic stuff. And I forget where I got this, the idea to get this. This is, if I'm not mistaken, this is part of a series on early Christology. It's like 13, 16 parts or something. I'm trying to get one a month, but my budget, I'm running out because I've got other books I'm buying. But I've got some, like The Two Powers in Heaven by Sanders is one of them. But so let me just read a little bit. Uh, and this is page 172, and I think you'll enjoy this. Okay, along this line, Hurtado, which I really like a lot of Larry Hurtado's stuff, claimed that Jewish Christianity modified pre-Christian Jewish monotheism. He failed, however, to explain why, if principal angels were only servants or agents of God, the later rabbis looked upon them with suspicion. Alan Siegel noted that rabbis in the second century AD, Brother Bernard in his new book writes on some of this too, and beyond considered the principal angel figures to be a threat to monotheism. He found, like Metatron, he found little, however, in pre-Christian speculation, which to support the classification of these ideas as heretical. This suggests that a modification of monotheism monotheism did come not in the first century of Christianity, as Hurtado suggests, but in later centuries with the rabbis. Apparently they felt it necessary to define monotheism in stricter terms and to separate themselves from the Christians and the Gnostics. So related to this, Hurtado assumed pre-Christian Jewish monotheism to be exclusivistic and Unitarian in nature. He apparently looked to the rabbis for this definition of monotheistic faith and constructed his thesis accordingly. However, one can look on the rabbis to understand pre-Christian monotheism. If the argument above is correct, the rabbis modified monotheism through their conflict with Christians and other heretical groups who uh, viewed monotheism in more fluid terms. Now, I will just say, I do not view monotheism in fluid terms. God is a spirit. Extremely important there. So, then he, he comes out, Yahweh is a corporate person. I would say Jehovah is the correct pronunciation. Um, A.R. Johnson, his book, The One and the Many in the Israelite Conception of God, stated concisely and clearly a view of Hebrew theology, which has been adopted by a considerable number of scholars, believing Hebrew anthropology informed Hebrew theology. He began with the Israelite concept of man possessing an indefinable extension of the personality or corporate dimension. Since the Hebrews conceived of God in largely anthropomorphic terms and believed man was created in God's image, of course he was, Genesis 126, he argued they viewed that their one God, Yahweh, as having extensions of his own person. He found evidence for this concept in the spirit, the divine word, the name, the ark, the covenant. He discovered further evidence for Yahweh's manyness in the ambiguity involved in the plural. The angel of Yahweh figure in the Old Testament concept, the prophet of God's spokesman, or Yahweh in person. What he's trying to say is God is a he, not a they, but he could express himself as manyness, the seven spirits of God, the angel of his presence, whatever the case may be, and those could be debated and argued and all this. But he's still one spirit and one person, Adam, created in the image of God, not a multiplicity of person phenomenal stuff. Old Testament Yahweh text in Paul's Christology. That's not the only thing good in here. That was just a sampling. God bless you. Get this whole series. We'll, we'll talk with you later. Bye-bye.